everybody. In this video, we're going to identify sampling methods, but the first thing we need to know is we need to know sampling methods. So in order to select a sample that is likely to be representative of the population, you need to choose members of the sample using randomness. So the, the simplest way to use ran randomness is with a sample or a simple random sample. All right, when you do this, you need to make sure that you're not introducing any bias into this random sample, that it is truly random, and that you're not gonna get any kind of outcome that could be heavily biased or even slightly biased. So in a simple random, in a simple random sample, each member of the population is equally likely to be chosen, and each possible sample of the size you want is equally likely to be chosen. So care must be taken to avoid bias. In this one, we had a stratified sampling, and this is when a population is divided into groups with similar characteristics, and a sample is randomly chosen from each group. So this would be maybe freshmen are in a group, sophomores are in a group, juniors are in a group and seniors are in a group and we take um, a random sample from those groups so i will sample 75 percent of freshmen 75 percent of sophomores 75 percent of juniors and 75 percent of seniors Cluster sampling is when a population is divided into convenient clusters and the entire cluster is chosen at random as the sample. So again, convenient clusters, they just happen to be in that place at that time to take the sample. Systematic sampling is when you start with one member chosen at random, then use a rule such as every third member of the population to select members of that sample. So I might say, okay, every third person who walks out from the grocery store, I will ask them if they use a coupon or not. High risk of bias is convenience sampling is only choosing subjects that are close in proximity or easy to get to. So this goes back to polling your friends. Let's say you all took a science exam and you and your friends did poorly on it. And then coming to the conclusion that the full class did poorly on it. Um, we see this a lot um, as you get through schools. That is a convenient sampling because again, your friends are convenient to you to ask questions and to sample. To get a true true poll, you would probably want to do kind of the cluster, the stratified um, sampling. You don't want to do something that is convenient, like asking somebody if they like to go to the movies and going to the movie theater to ask that question. That gives an obvious bias. Um, another one is a self-selected sampling, is using a sampling made up of volunteers. So, or a self-selected, sorry, sampling. So again, people who are willing to give their opinion, willing to say their test score to you. Um, some people might not, and therefore you're getting kind of this bias because you're not getting the full picture. All right, so there are some sampling models. Let's put this into practicality now. So let me hide that. Let's get some things here. So what sampling method is used in the following examples and is the method likely to be biased? Starting with a random chosen ID number, every fifth student ID number was chosen that the student was asked to fill out a survey. So let's take a moment and think here. Big clues here are that it's every fifth student, but this is randomly ID. So we're not picking um, specific students. We're not picking a specific class or specific area. We're just basically looking, okay, student ID 300001 and 300004. We're starting to see this randomness because we're, we're not being able to tell if that's a junior, a freshman, a senior, a sophomore. Um, 
where they are in age, where they are in abilities, things like that. And we're just asking them to take a survey. So this one falls under the systematic sampling. So the rule is that every fifth number is chosen. This method is unlikely to be biased. There still could be slight bias in this, but in general, this is unlikely to be biased. The second scenario is a real retailer puts feedback cards at the front of its store. They got responses from 22% of their customers. So we're looking at this possibly to be doing the be between two different um, methods. This could be the convenience because again, it's conveniently in their store, conveniently at the front, or it could be a self-selected sampling because it's only people who want to participate. So this one leans heavily to the self-selected because again, the customer has to want to participate. So this is a self-selected sample, which only includes people who decided to respond to the survey. This method is not random and very likely biased because that person might be filling out that card because they didn't have a pleasant experience at the store, which means that 22% of people might not have had a pleasant experience and decided to fill out that card. Or it could be a customer that's repeatedly coming in and loves the store and fills out the card every single time. All right, the last one is a city wants to know what percent of people in the city own a dog or a cat. A city worker goes door to door in the neighborhood and announce <laughs> neighborhood around city sorry, hall to ask sorry. City hall to ask people about their pets. Siri just heard it. I didn't even say here. Hey Siri, I don't know what what's happening with my Siri. So a city wants to, let me just reread that. A city wants to know what percent of people in the city own a dog or a cat. A city worker goes door to door in the neighborhood around the city hall to ask people about their pets. All right, so let's think about this one. This is not systematic. So this could possibly be cluster, but it looks like they're going to one neighborhood instead of, and it's around city hall. So it's convenient for this city worker. So I would say that this is a convenient sampling because only the neighborhood around city hall was sampled and the process is likely to be biased because pets may be more or less common in this part of the city. We might be looking at a downtown part of the city where pets are less common or city hall might be in a suburban area where pets could be more common. All right, guys, so these are the different sampling methods. Um, if you need to rewind and write them down, go right ahead. And if you have any comments or questions, always feel free to ask and I will catch you in the next video.